Run it back, turbo. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome back. It's time again for another edition of the weekly member spotlight. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I hope I hope a few of you are still at your desk and, and waiting to get out there and celebrate with some chips and salsa or queso or guac or whatever your fancy is today. But I'm excited to be here today with someone I'm just meeting for the very first time for this weekly member spotlight. Without further ado, I'd like to dive right in and welcome our guest today, Mr. Gary Warden. Gary is the community manager at Downtown Living with Town Properties, the Downtown Living Portfolio with, Down, with Town Properties. So welcome, Gary. Thank you for taking time to sit down with us this morning. Thank you. I like being here. So thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's always fun talking to someone um, that I haven't met for the first time. It's kind of a, a balancing act. I'm talking to people um, with this uh, initiative that I've either known for my entire life or that I've never met before. So I, I like this where I'm meeting um, one of our members for the first time. Um, tell us a little bit about um, what you do with town and in your role and maybe how long you've been in the industry. I've been in the industry a little over 20 years. Um, I My role here is to uh, make sure all the puzzle pieces fit together and when one's missing, figure out how you're going to, you know, uh, replace it and uh, just uh, making sure the team is all working on all cylinders and, uh, you know, keeping up with CapEx project, projects. Got it. Well, that's a full time job. I can attest to that. Yeah. How yeah. did you get into the apartment industry? Well, I was uh, renting my own. I had a property that I was renting and, um, you know, started to look for information and things like that. And uh, uh, I noticed an opportunity and just kind of went for it. Great. And, and what do you like so much about property management? Uh, obviously the people, uh, you know, obviously the people, I'm sure that's a standard answer, but hey, you know, all of us have to be able to get along with people and like getting to know new people. Um, so I'm sure that's a common thread, but over and above, working with the people and the teammates and the new people you meet and the challenges you meet there. Uh, again, going back to the puzzle, I like solving the puzzle. I, right. I like figuring out, oh my gosh, we have a, uh, you know, flood here and this happened over there. And I just love uh, marrying it together and um, uh, working with my team and learning together how to solve the problem. Well, it's really cool that each day is so different. Um, so there's yeah. never not a puzzle to be solving, right? Right. I'm sure we've all thought about uh, writing a sitcom, you know, sure. all the, you know, it's just, it would be so easy to do. And I'm, I'm so surprised that it hasn't been done already. I concur. It's uh, unbelievable that we don't at least have reality TV or something. Yeah. Reality TV. I guess Fulky <laughs> Towers with Don Cleese maybe, but uh, right. uh, well, yeah, it would be a uh, Absolutely. I was just going to say to kind of talk about the challenges a little bit, um, since you you love that part of it so much, solving for all the challenges. What what are some of the challenges that you see facing the apartment industry in this current day and age? Uh, I, I like seeing the, the um, loosening up the legislation for uh, nonviolence uh, and providing to um, to have good quality housing. Uh, certainly, there we have to be careful how far we step there. Right. Uh, but I, I I don't disagree with what's been happening. Uh, what I see moving towards the future, I'd like to see um, a, a clear definition or maybe even some legislation on mm -hmm. ES abuse. Uh, I think there there needs to be something a little more defined. Just to just be for for the community, the managers, the owner. It's it's not fair to be able to bring an ostrich into your you know apartment every night. You know, uh, I, getting some clear definition on uh, coming up. Um, you know. Yeah, let's see what else I can. Uh, yeah, I mean, and this uh, trend towards uh, charging for every nickel and dime thing. Am I breaking up? Just a little bit. Yeah, I, I got what you were saying about emotional support animals and, you know, the insanity of being able to bring in things like ostriches. And <laughs> so I, I was catching a little bit of it. But um, yeah, that's that's definitely a challenge these days, isn't it? It is. It is. And I hope that uh, legislation uh, takes a look at that in the near future. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, well, having been in this industry and certainly along the lines of um, seeing things like emotional support ostriches or pot bellied pigs or all the things that we've, we've seen in our career, um, what's a memorable story that comes to mind as you think back on, on the years that you've been in this industry? Uh, one that uh, stands out clear in my head is uh, the uh, arsonist that I that I was able to, to capture. I was uh, I was um, managing uh, senior housing. OK. And of course, you know, there's all kinds of fun, lovable characters everywhere. Um, but uh, one night there, somebody tried to start a fire underneath a vacant apartment door. Oh, no. And I was like, OK, that's weird. So I set up a little hidden camera. And um, the next night, I saw this this character uh, come up, and he seemed like he knew where I had put the camera, but he couldn't see it. And uh, then he, he went down to his apartment. Obviously, he lived right below. Came back up with this costume and gasoline, and started pouring it all over the hallway and uh, trying to, to to catch that door on fire, that particular oh door. So, um, so the next day I looked at the, uh, the footage and I was like, I know who that is. It's the person right below that unit. Goodness. And so, uh, so we brought the police in and we got it. And so I was able to capture him. Um, you know, the poor guy, he was, you know, there was some behavioral issues there, um, you know, and certainly brought the family in and sympathetic, but uh, you still have to follow the rules. You still have to, to go by the line of evictions right. and like that and so uh but he was able to get the help he need but the interesting thing was uh in talking to his family uh the brothers and sisters had them all together and at first they were fighting you know say you know not our dad that couldn't have been him and da 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 um but eventually it started to evolve where the son would say well remember at christmas a long time ago we had the fire in the barn and the Oh my gosh, you know, that's right. My sister's graduation, he was here. And, and so they became to realize that, yeah. that, you know, there was a serious issue. That That's crazy. And I'll tell you, there one realization that I've had in this industry is that, you know, we're not really trained to be mental health professionals or experts, but what you see when you live with your, you know, clients and your customers, like you see um, things like, mental health concerns and addictions and things like that, that you really have to work through um, and manage because it it plays a part in, in the whole entire uh, residency that you're, you're serving. So um, that's, that's definitely an interesting story. Um, well, last, right. last but not least in the, the business side of the interview, I wanted to ask um, what kind of advice would you offer up to people who are considering property management as a career, or kind of the next generation of this industry? I would um, certainly uh, have them use GCNKA as a resource. Uh, it's a very valuable, and I'm not just sucking up. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I we'll take it if you are. <laughs> uh, I, I served on the education committee for a couple of years a while back and, and uh, was very proud of that. And um, but there's a lot to offer. You guys seem to be right on. I love your your newsletter. Just reading it uh, mm -hmm. uh, earlier. And uh, the articles are, are, are just so well done. It's a great resource. But over and above that is sharing the knowledge that, that you get and, uh, and, and encourage other people to do it as well. Uh, so many times people huddle knowledge and they keep it like, you know, like it's their money or something and right. they don't want to let any of it out. But when you, what you give out knowledge wise turns around right back to you. And uh, as managers, we always, you have to be able to leave your property knowing that, hey, it's in good hands. This right. happens, this happens, whatever, because I've, you know, I've trained them, I've taught them. So don't be afraid to share your knowledge. This is something I would advise. I love that. That is very sage advice. And thank you. I, I agree. I do not work for GCNKAA. I'm just like you. I'm a member and um, I feel the same way. I, I regret not being more involved earlier in my career. Um, it's been you know, just the second half of my career where I've been so involved. And I'm like, what, where would I be? What would I know had I started you know, at the beginning of my career? So I think that's great advice. Yeah. Well, my favorite part of this initiative, Gary, is getting to know our members more on a personal level. So if it's good with you, I'd like to shift gears and get to know you a little bit more. Sure. Starting with, first of all, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, I'm married to uh, Amy 
and uh, she had two children from a previous marriage, as did I. And uh, so we have a family of four children. And uh, Lucas is graduating uh, this weekend coming up oh, or next it. week, next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, my son just bought his first vehicle. So I'm proud of that. Nice. Uh, so, uh, but everybody's doing great. Yeah. Well, that's fun. What do you like to do in your, your downtime as a family hobbies or interests as a family or individually? Um, me and my son, Duncan, we like to chop wood together. We like really? to split wood and it's kind of something we've always done ever since he was a kid and uh, taught him how to do it. And, and so when we uh, need some exercise or need to vent a little frustration, we go out and chop a bunch of wood. So there's always wood available, uh, chopping it up and, and stacking it and then burning it later that night. Yeah. Uh, but personally, I like to boat and I like uh, played rugby for five years too. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, do you like boating on lakes or are you a river person? Like, where do you, where do you get out? More of a river person, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned through my friends. I am not, um, much of a boater, but I have friends who are. So I, by proxy, have got to experience it, that you, you are either river or you are lake. You're not usually both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's fun. Um, since it's approaching summer and, and all the things, um, I like asking this question about vacations. What's one of the most memorable vacations that you've mm. taken? Well, as a child, uh, we would always go, we went across country a couple times in the van, you know, the whole, all the stories that you oh, hear, gosh. you know, and yeah. craziness. Uh, uh, so I enjoyed that, saw a ton of the country, uh, which was beautiful. But the most memorable and what I like the best is going down to Key West with my oh. family when I was a kid. And uh, we stayed at this in, on Long Key, right on the, you know, right on the Gulf of Mexico and we could fish and wake up and there it is. Uh, but now uh, Amy and I like to go to a friend, a friend of our zones a cabin in, in uh, uh, Red River Gorge. Oh, nice. So she lets us have it whenever we want. It's an absolutely gorgeous property. Uh, it's secluded and, and just beautiful. So we're very, very blessed to have that opportunity. Well, that we sounds awesome. It sounds like you like doing anything outdoors. Yeah, love it. Nice. Um, so in addition to the family, I also meant to ask about pets. Do you have any pets at home? Two cats. And that was an adjustment. I was raised with dogs. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I always thought, I don't want to, but the, you know, those, they just grow on you. They're just incredible little beings and uh, they really are. seeing, uh, yeah, the different spirits and it's just a lot of fun to watch them. Grow. Okay. Well, since you're a cat person, I have to tell you this. Um, my son who is 11, the science fair is today at his school and the project that he came up with all by himself, he did it by himself, start to finish was he wanted to determine if cats have a dominant hand. We have two cats and our neighbors have cats and his dad has a cat. And so like, you know, he's, he's a cat, we're cat and we're animal people. But anyway, so he does this huge experiment and he makes the big poster board. He was up at like 5.30 this morning, practicing his presentation and he's so excited about it. Uh, but fun fact, cats do in fact have a dominant hand based on his research, so. <laughs> That's amazing, I love that. I never it was thought so, to think that. But. I know, I was like very proud of him and then, being who I am, I'm like, buddy, you, you sure you don't want me to help out? I can type that up for you. I can create, a, he did a pie chart to demonstrate the time for left Paul and right Paul like dominance, but he wanted to draw nice. it like with markers. And I'm over here like, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. What ball of string does he go for? You know, that's exactly what he did. Yep. He, yeah. he bought a cat toy and like tested them over multiple days. It was super cute. So Thank yeah, you for sounds, letting me share that story since you're a cat. Uh, sounds like you got a brilliant guy on your hands. I know, right? I'm biased, but um, what are your cat's names? Uh, Mickey and Rocky. Cute. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, well, if, if you're taking the family out to eat or taking your wife out to eat for a nice dinner, what's one of your favorite foods or restaurants to enjoy? Oh, we like to get sushi at Sweet Basil. It's uh, oh. right off uh, Buttermilk Pike in Northern yeah. Tech. Yeah. Uh, nice. It's just, they do a great job. It's relaxed. It's not, you know, it's just, it's delicious. It's just some, and it was like one of our first dates we went there. Oh, well, so. that's nice. Cool. Yeah. So sushi. Um, mm -hmm. Very good. And what about sports? Do you all follow sports? And if so, who's your team? Go Bengals. Who day? Who day? There's yep. no other I'll answer really. Yeah. I know it's baseball season, but I'm just yeah. counting down the days. Oh, love the Reds. Love the Cyclones. Uh, you know, FC Cincinnati. We got a lot going on here. We're really uh, blessed yeah. to have such a It is exciting. Uh, Cyclones are still in the race. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, I think yeah. they have a game tomorrow. I saw like, they're still in the contention. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, um, 
more more of a question for you personally. Um, are you a reader or a podcast listener? And if so, did any any books or podcasts you would recommend? Um, well, while we're on sports podcasts, I would go with Dave Lapham. He's an old oh. ex Bengal and he's got yeah. a lot of insight, a lot of good guests. So I like yeah. that. Uh, but books, uh, favorite book growing up was World According to Garb. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, Doctor Strange Love. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I like listening to Dave Lapham too. Even the post game, like I'll just mm-hmm. turn on the radio. Uh, yeah. There's just something about, he feels very like, he just feels like home, like a part of Cincinnati. So yeah. Um, well, what about TV shows or movies? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, certainly an all-time favorite is probably Casablanca. Um, I just, the character work and everything. Yeah, and another classic. Involved and story writing and how the movie came to be. It's just, it's amazing to hear about. Um, uh, we're watching uh, Succession right now. Um, Tony Lasso, uh, you know, of course, Game of Thrones is awesome. Uh, those are some of the ones I really like. Okay, so I am late to the party with all of those. I need I've I've heard Ted Lasso for oh sure. My. Like, gotta get gotta get to that. Um, so I'm feeling like I'm I'm a little left out. I'm gonna have to find I'm gonna have to find a binge yeah. weekend and get to yep. it. Yep, you're gonna have to. <laughs> okay, so music. What's one of the best concerts that you've attended? Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, it's I'm not even really a huge fan of these guys, but when I was growing up, I went to uh, ZZ Top and Sammy Hagar. I think ZZ Top <laughs> opened for Sammy Hagar and yeah. just blew me away. I just, I just, it was such an entertaining concert. So that was kind of one of the Cincinnati Coliseum. I bet. Oh, wow. The Coliseum. Mm-hmm. Um, I, li- I liked them just because they were kind of popular when in my day. My yeah. dad, of course, loved, loved all of that stuff. So I can see mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, well, so I, I usually ask this question, like if, if it's related to TV or movies, but I've kind of expounded, expanded it. If you could be anyone else, TV character, movie character, book character, musician, actor, whatever, who would you be? <laughs> Sonny. <laughs> Don Corleone, of course. I like Don Corleone. Um, he, not Michael, Don, his father. Yeah. yeah his, his focus on family and refusing to be a fool and dancing around for everybody, knowing what he knows and um, how intelligent he was and thoughtful and um, calm. Nice. Um, I wish it didn't take living the life of being a fool to like have that wisdom and and that, you know, yeah. take, I wish I would have started out 20 years ago being able to be like, I'm going to just do what it's I think is best struggle, instead yeah. of trying to please all the people, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Well, I got a couple more questions for you, Gary, and yeah. I'll let you get to your weekend. Um, so the first of my last two questions is what's a random fun fact about you that people wouldn't otherwise know? I'm an actor. I'm a professional actor. I'm a SAG member. Um, really? I've, yeah, several m- little movies, like usually day player stuff. Uh, yeah. Call in, got a couple lines, a couple scenes here and there, uh, TV shows, national commercials, commercials. Wow, local. that yeah. is cool. I'm a thespian. Um, hey. Never, never TV, but what's um, what's the favorite performance that you've had? Um, I've had bigger ones, but my favorite is the role I played in Outsiders, WGN America. Yeah. Um, I It was a season two, I, I forget what it is, season two, episode five or something like that. Anyway, I got to play a bad guy, I had three scenes. Um, and I just, I just, that's for the, for the public to see, I think that was my favorite. That's cool. So when they announced that a movie is being filmed in Cincinnati and they need some people, are you like always first in line? It's agencies, yeah. yeah. My agent uh, and the casting director in Pittsburgh, they they know me. I've been there with them for a very long time. They know if it's worth it to call or, yeah. uh, or whatever opportunity. Hey, Gary could do this. Um, so that that's I'm blessed to have that that on my side. Well, so, that's uh, super cool. How did you get into acting? I was just, you know, started in high school. I got a laugh and, you know, I was like, wow, oh, wow, this is fun. And then uh, the people that were involved in theater and and going to Northern Kentucky with a scholarship for mm-hmm. acting and, uh, you know, doing it there, being well trained by the NKU staff and, and uh, meeting so many friends and uh, just moving up in the industry from there. See, now this is the random fun fact kind of thing that I am so here for. Like, how would anyone that doesn't necessarily get to spend time with you know something like that? That's super cool. 
I hope I run into you at another, like at a GCNK sure. event, because I'm going to talk yeah. it off probably about theater, but what's the, what's the most favorite theater production that you were in high school or otherwise? Uh, nobody's going to really know this. I don't think, um, okay. Shenandoah, I just, it's the, the music and the theme and the story is so quality. Uh, I just think it's a very underrated musical and I just, I just adored being in it. I've heard of it, but never I'm mm -hmm. from a very small town um, north of Cincinnati, um, so we didn't do anything super um, unique, but um, I will, I'll have to add that to my listening. If, if that's coming from a theater actor um, fanatic, I trust that it's great. What's your favorite? Um, well, my favorite Broadway show of all time is probably Miss Saigon. Um, Ooh, yeah. Rent is uh, another favorite one, but here. in terms yeah. of like what I, what I did in high school, I did a summer youth theater program, which was a, a lot of local schools here. Um, and we did Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So I absolutely, ah, I love that. That. I was but I also kid, played yeah. Golda and Fiddler on the Roof. And that was probably my wow. biggest like part. So that was incredible. Um, but I'm like, now I'm a patron. So I go see all the things and love, love, love. My son loves you know, knows we're, we're the trendy people too. So like, he knows every word to Hamilton and we've seen wicked 29 times and not 29, but too many times. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just That's super, cool. I love, I just love theater. Good. We got a lot of good theater around here. Uh, we do for sure. We are very fortunate and, and the acting that doesn't have to be just the musical piece, but the acting, I, I hope that I, uh, I aspire to find a time in my life where I can do some community theater and, and whatnot. It's just such, such an art. Yeah. Um, you're in big trouble if I ever run into you and we just have all the time to talk about this. I know. So just yeah, fair warning. Um, but I, I know we got to get to our Fridays and I want to be respectful of your time. I've got one last question for you, Gary. Um, before that though, thank you again for participating. This has been fantastic. This is exactly why we do these kinds of initiatives to get to know our members better. Um, but my last question is how do you think the people who have worked with you throughout your career in the apartment industry would describe you as a leader? Uh, I certainly, um, I would hope they would say generous. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for, for training your replacement. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and if you stay with that mindset of training your replacement, and of course, not unless your boss comes to you and tell you to do that. Uh, that's maybe a different story, yeah. but just having, that, you know, uh, just having that kind of instinct, um, is, is something that that they might not even know it, but it it endears you to them, and it endears them to the industry. I think back, um, uh, providing resources, uh, letting them share in solving the problem. You right. know, I've solved that problem a dozen times. How would you do it? Let me see right. the letter you write. Um, so delegating that kind of stuff is so so important. Um, and then when you're in that position, be sure to you know you know, return the favor. Right. Well, I love all of that very much. Thank you again. It's so nice to meet you. And thanks again for taking time and sharing your professional and personal history. It's been fantastic. Um, you have any fun plans for the weekend? Plans for the weekend. Um, I have to get ready for next weekend's graduation party. So it'll yeah. be more wood chopping, more nice. mulching, you know, that sort of thing. Well, I hope it's productive. It looks like it's going to be a nice weekend. So I hope the weather's on your side and um, best of luck next week to the family with graduation. And I hope that our paths cross again, Gary. Thank you. I hope so too. Thanks for having me. All right. Goodbye. Well, thank you. Yep. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back next week for another edition of the weekly member spotlight. Bye.